Hello, Mark Osfeldt from ADM Investor Services International. Uh, with some observations about what's been going on in markets, particularly equity markets, um, and uh, to a certain extent with credit spreads um, since uh, the election uh, in the United States. Um, so my first chart this week is a very familiar one. It's uh, the comparison between US investment grade corporate credit spreads versus high yield corporate credit spreads. Um, I think the remarkable thing in all of this is the premium that was put in there ahead of the election was very, very modest. Um, and indeed, now we've got to uh, levels in terms of credit spreads on high yield bonds, which basically are pre-COVID-19 levels. Uh, that's really quite amazing, given um, the amount of uncertainty that there remains in the world, vaccine or no. Um, the second chart um, is the VIX volatility index. Um, I think it's just interesting to observe the fact that uh, as much as this put in a lot of risk premium into the VIX uh, ahead of the election, uh, a lot of that has been largely washed out. Um, <clears throat> but it may not necessarily, because it is basically uh, a measure of volatility of the S&P 500, be telling us the whole story about what's actually going on in the underlying in the in the broader market broader US equity market as a whole uh, for which um, my uh, third chart I think is the interesting one uh, it's a much shorter term chart it's uh, a comparison of the performance of the uh, S&P 500 future versus the Dow future versus the Nasdaq future. And as one can see, there is a genuine battle royal going on here uh, in principle between growth versus value stocks, uh, but also between, uh, and to a certain extent, um, <clears throat> the growth aspect is uh, represented by sentiment towards the tax sector. Um, but I think that it, it is it really sort of gives us a rather better picture than either the VIX or indeed credit spreads of the of a good deal of turmoil going on in equity markets and a great deal of uncertainty, which is wholly unsurprising because as much as a vaccine uh, offers us a, a lot of hope going forward, there's no doubt about that. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the problem on the other side of the coin is we're still going to have a very challenging winter. Uh, the infection rates are still rising um, and we have no real guarantee that when the vaccine starts to be rolled out, it will be rolled out in sufficient numbers to get people basically or get activity levels moving again. Um, to it, uh, the fourth chart today, I think, still remains my bellwether for what's uh, for sentiment towards uh, economic recovery, and that's the oil market. Uh, this is the WTI crude oil future, and as one can see, when the vaccine news came through, uh, we certainly got a big boost, um, but then the reality of the fact that that vaccine probably doesn't impact the market and certainly doesn't improve the economic uh, demand, which needs to, well, the economic recovery, which needs to improve oil demand uh, for quite some time. Now, um, Taking a, a sort of a slightly lateral move, uh, I moved to Asia uh, simply because I think the developments there, are in particularly in Japan and China, are well worth looking at. China is clearly suffering at the moment um, <clears throat> from the fact uh, that there is a, a they, there are attacks on its tax sector from the U.S. and of course the the failed anti IPO. Uh, that we had. So the first chart that we've got um, of the two ones for Asia uh, is comparing uh, the uh, Nikkei 225 versus the CSI 300. Uh, and as one can see from the chart, the um, CSI 300 basically went fairly much knock for knock and slightly outperformed the Nikkei, but latterly it's actually outperformed, uh, the Nikkei has outperformed quite severely as the CSI has retreated on the back of the woes in the banking sector due to defaults and also the attack, attacks on the um, uh, the tech sector. So there is another factor at play here, and I think that is basically that the yuan has appreciated a lot versus the yen, and that makes basically the yen um, uh, makes Japanese stocks look quite attractive. And this is my last chart for the day, which is basically looking at uh, dollar yuan, uh, the dollar yen and indeed a uh, yen yuan. Um, those are the thoughts for this week.